Hey, what's up, folks? Welcome to my channel. I'm your host Sumit, and I am back again with another Blender tutorial. And this time, I've decided to remake one of my older Blender videos because you know my older videos kind of suck with all the crappy audio quality where you guys could hardly understand what I was blabbering. But well, I kind of suck even now with all my gibberish and also those videos are seriously outdated. So I thought of remaking them with the updated Blender version and also a better audio quality, hopefully. So here I am presenting the remake of how to create a realistic candle flame animation in Blender 2.9. So let's get started with Blender and let's create some candle flame animation there. Okay, we start the project by de uh, deleting all the default objects from the scene and create a new mesh, a cylinder, and then you know get the point of origin to the bottom of the to the bottom of the geometry, and then I will scale it down uh, in respect of x and y axis to make it a little bit slimmer, like this one, you know, to you know represent something like like a candle should always us. So let me scale it up uh, apply the scale and if i'm going to you know the item uh, let me put on my screencast here first yeah if i'm going to the item you can see it's uh, the height is still too much but over here it's 40 centimeter by you know length and breadth so that's also pretty high i will also i'll still you know have to scale it down something like this in in order to make it you know quite uh, you know believable as for um, a candle because we are working in a real world situation over here so this should be the candle let me scale it down in the z-axis a little bit even more and apply the scale once again so that's the base of my candle now I will have to do a couple of things in order to you know have a have a good geometry so on the top of it i will select the top face and hit i to create an inset face and uh, you know put somewhere around like there and i will hit another inset you know to make it somewhere around like this and gz to push it downwards a little bit so with these things done i will now create some you know smoother edge on the top and the bottom so by selecting this top edge loop by all by hitting alt and you know left clicking one edge and by hitting ctrl b i can give a little bit of a bevel on the top edge loop and i will do the same for the bottom edge loop but i will repeat the process of you know creating some inset face so like this and somewhere like that and for this one i i can you know merge them at the center by hitting m so the same process let me go to the edge mode and create a bevel over there as well and uh, now it's time to create some loop cut by control r you know create some more geometry and something like that and some more geometry over here as well and pretty much good now if I am just to double check if I'm using two level of subdivision everything is everything is working perfect you know everything was good one four and this one's you know even nicer but one thing that I have noticed is over this area so let me just put another inset face and hit M to scale at the center now with the two level of subdivision things are getting even more smoother okay cool now let me get back to you know the sculpting mode and i will do a little bit of a sculpting here so with the sculpting tool enabled i'll have to i'll just go through and create a you know very smooth transition of the of this area like this give some give some variations in or in the geometry you know something like that and 
make something like a wax dripping from its surface and with the grab tool let me scale it up I will create something like this you know some irregular geometry and over here something like this let me increase the radius a little bit even more and create something like that okay cool now I'm getting back to my original geometry and hitting two level of subdivision there and selecting shape smooth cool now it's for uh, now the candle base of the candle is done now I will again start and create another you know, cylinder obviously the cylinder is pretty big so scale it down to be about you know adjustable sides and some even more and then I will do the same thing okay let me just do a little bit of a quickie things what I did I again put the you know base of the geometry to the uh, you know the point of origin of the geometry to the base of the geometry now I will again scale it down to be about you know believable size for a week and then scale it up on the z-axis and make something like that and still it's I'll have to I'll have to make it even more thinner and you know what that's it okay wow. and you know apply the scale to the week as well so perfect the week and the candle is done now it's time to create the flame again so let me just introduce the flame by hitting by introducing a you know uv sphere again the sphere is too big and i will scale it down to be about like this size even more somewhere like this hit grab and z to place it on top of the wick and apply scale to it as well and now let's you know select one vertex and with my proportional editing on the shortcut key should go let me grab and z and you can see it's taking too much of the of the area because the radi radius is too high so i will make something like this and you know the flame is too big so i will scale it down even more you know you know to make some some sort of a you know believable size and place it on top of the wig once again and i will apply all you know, both the location rotation as well as the scale okay so the candle is pretty much done the base of the candle is done but uh, there is no animation as you can see if i'm playing it there is no animation so once again i'll have to put the animation with uh, i'm not bothering about you know much of uh, the f the fires or s simulation or any other things i will create a busier curve a busier circle and i will create an empty and i will do the same things once again in order to animate this flame so now what i should do uh, there are a couple of modifiers to be used the first one is the displacement modifier uh, with this displacement modifier it's going crazy you know so i'll go to the texture and add a new clouds texture for this one and maybe the scale should be 1.25 you know a pretty big scale and with this you know uh, with this displacement modifier I will just turn the value down to be around like uh, like something 0.1 no not 0.1 it should be like 0.5 it's getting to too much 0.05 and let's see what what's going on in there 0 0.08 now 0 0.05 will be good you now something like that so without it and with it without it and with it and I will create an empty first thing over here an empty plane axis bring it sideways and this empty will be my guideline for the candle you know the flame flickering of the flame and I will create a Bezier circle rotate it along the x-axis to be about 90 degree and I will put the I will you know let me just put it over here 
I will uh, act this this basic curve to be the guidelines uh, for this MT to follow. So at first the MT and then the Bezier curve and then Control P and select Follow Path. Now with this Bezier circle selected, I will go down to my curves channel. As you can see now the base now the MT is moving, but as soon as we hit frame 100, there is no more movement because the path animation is set to 100 frames only. So I'll you know increase it to around 250, and you see it's now moving infinitely. And cycling through you know the the last frame because now the frames of this animation and my frame of this you know the scene ma matches so it goes like that and now this little area this uh, this displacement modifier will be guided by this empty so instead of local coordinates I will sit down to an object and my duplicate object should be this empty so now if I am hitting play, you see there is a little bit of a movement going around. But the movement is you know, still not too much. So I will increase that size to be around like 0 0.06. And uh, over here, I think the channel is too, you know, too much. Let me just increase the size and put that and let me tweak something with this okay the depth 16 and it's 1.25 let me increase this one again and let's check it but still the effect is you know too much so I will you know decrease the strength to be about 0 0.025 still very much 0 0.01 and you get the uh, slight movement over here to point zero two. And we can increase the scale to about 0.015. Okay. Okay. Now, cool. It's it's moving as it should. Now, let me you know add one more little modifier, and that modifier shall be a wave modifier. But as soon as I put, you see it's going huge up. So I will put the height to be around 0.001 and let me see how is it actually moving still the movement is you know quite high so i will decrease that to be about 0 0.0005 triple zero five and you see a very slight movement is going around there and i will also stack two level of subdivision and now but still it's not looking realistic enough so what i will do let me just bring it down I will uh, select this vertex and then select the next edge loop by hitting ctrl plus and create a vertex group over there and going back to my you know modifiers tab I will act this vertex group to be the guidelines and select invert and now if I am playing you see this kind of a movement is going around but still I think it's you know too much so 0 0.0003 should be you know good enough or oh, 0 0.0001 uh, and a very slight movement okay yeah so something like that so let me save this one real quick it's uh, over there camera animation Okay. cool now pretty much our animation is done now for uh, the final touch for the final touch I will add a camera over here so camera and select control alt 0 to snap the camera to my view and I will activate view lock the camera to view and I will place the camera where I want 
you know the scene to be and for this you know camera i will start with a 90 mm of a focal length because this is a close up shot and put the camera to be around like there somewhere like this and i can see it's now going good so let me just go to cycles hit down to cpu and give my you know background color a pretty much black but i can see that still there is no light because there isn't any light indeed so i will create a point lamp and uh, select the point lamp to go above the flame so gz and just put it right about there and let me double check it's too you know it's too bright for this kind of light so i will make this you know 5 watt and make it a little bit of a you know orange tint maybe 2 watt or you know 0.5 watt okay 1 watt yep yeah. make something like this okay and make the radius you know go like this pretty big pretty small radius save once again now let me get back to modeling this uh, you know putting the texture on the stuff now for the candle the candle body i will take help from blender kit add on again so switching my search you know engine from models to materials i will search for wax and hit enter and you see there is a candle wax material so as my candle body is already selected i will just left click and it will be applied automatically onto the surface of the of the candle wax body and uh, for the wick i will create a new material uh, rename it as wick and i will just give it a darker tone pretty simple and for the flame that's the main thing to do so we have got flame okay and uh, what i will do over here is uh, i will put on a shade uh, go in go to the my shaders channel and tweak it over there so for the base color of this principal bsdf i will use a uh, I will use an image texture that I have you know taken this one flame and plug it into the base color but as soon as I go to render you see this kind of thing happens it's actually not you know properly aligned because it's not UV you know textured yet it's not UV unwrapped yet so I'll go to the UV editing tab and you see there's no such thing called UV and UVs in here so what shall I do I will as everything is selected i'll double check everything by selecting everything and hit u and select project from view bounds now you see the image is already loaded but still i don't have any control over the uh, it's not looking good the uv so i will select everything and scale it on the x-axis to match you know the width select this area and as my you know proportional editing is still activated so i can just move it and place you know large scale of the mesh inside the image and uh, i will now just put some you know tweakings make some tweakings to you know match the image properly i think i need to decrease the radius a little bit in this area and let me scale it on the x-axis to make it something like that okay so now let me go to the material preview and you can see it's actually you know taking a good shape cool so you know as it's properly aligned so i can now go to the shadings uh you know say shading tab now that's the principal bsdf i will mix it with uh with an emission shader so shader a mix shader 
and use an uh, emission shader for the second channel and put the same you know input of the image to the color input of the you know, of the emission shader and plug this to the second channel of the mix shader let me see in the rendered view and you can see it's actually you know emitting so let me just you know turn down this point lamp and you can see there is a little bit of an emission there but the emission is not too strong it's not strong enough so what i will do i will you know multiply it so converter introduce a math node change this to you know at first let me just plug this color to the first channel or the value of this you know add and change this from add to multiply and now i will plug this value to the strength of the color now watch when i am increasing this value to about 20 it's getting you know lighter and we can also have a much more you know light going on so if i'm going to around 25 it's getting you know huge so i will put it down to 20 and i will also duplicate this one and plug another content but instead of multiply here i will add add to the scene and decrease the value to be about five you know just not to you know put so much in emphasis on this uh, let me just decrease this one a little bit okay now it's good enough now it's already you know taking place of the scene let me save because my computer is acting weird already now what to do with uh, it's actually 50% of the principal BSDF and 50% of the emission shader so I will control this factor by using a Fresnel node so input Fresnel and the default value is 1.45 I will just plug it in and you can see now that there is a you know a little bit of a glow going around there so let me just bring my my point lamp and you see the effect you can see the effect right now now if you want to you know increase the uh, light you can always you know increase this a uh, this factor value uh, let me just put it down to about 10 and you can see the effect already it has got a glowing edges uh, which is good okay and uh, that's not enough i will also use another shader so add shader because we cannot see the transparency yet so i will add a transparent bsdf and plug it in onto the second channel but as soon as i plug it in you see it's getting you know much brighter so i will just control the transparency by you know just sliding down the you know color channel to be out light like this okay cool it's already you know looking like a good candle isn't it so let me just go and see, you can see the effect already okay uh, i can also you know make something like this you know snap the camera to this kind of view because it's looking it's looking nicer in this in this view and also something like this now let me just you know put put the camera around like this and you can see the effect okay yeah it's good it's looking good okay so far so good save it out now let me just give it a little bit of a render and let's see how the scene is actually how the candle is actually looking it's gonna take a while because you know i have plugged uh, this subsurface scattering takes a takes a little bit of a time to render i should have you know decrease the samples anyway i'll pause the video and uh, once it's done i will return back oh it's done uh, good my computer feels insulted when i insult it <laughs> you know saying that it's a slow computer put out a pc but 
it's it is a potato biscuit okay okay anytime soon okay i'm i'm just uh, you know i'm not looking you know it's not looking that good because there is no glue effect so i will go to the compositing tab now it's time for post processing if you have node wrangler enabled you can just hold down control shift and left click and you can click on you know bring out the viewer node and then shift a the first the only effect i will you know use over here is the glare but instead of streaks i will use the fog glow and i will you know make this one from medium to about high you know make it even more you know subtle and uh, the size i will decrease it to around like six and nothing else maybe maybe seven yeah seven it's good so we have got a little bit of glow and now we will plug it into our composite tab and we are done so let me get back to layout and now let me you know make this scene a little bit of an interesting you know so what i can do as you can see let me see what the angle is you know good enough so as you have seen or uh, you have already noticed that my uh, camera to view is already locked i can now rotate my camera uh, in this you know in this viewer tab and i can place the camera let me let me make it more interesting and maybe use a plane to represent a ground and let me go to the renders tab and you see what a good render it's looking right now now i will also increase a fake fake light you know just just for the just for the record i will just introduce uh, an area lamp yep and place it over here uh, you know what let me place it over here yep and from the side view i will make it somewhere around like this and somewhere around like that okay so let me go to the renders tab and you see the effect now this one is having too much of an effect so i will just make it uh, you know decrease it to five watt and make it a subtle you know bluish tint to give it a more subtle look and you know what and the last thing that we need to do is to add a depth of field to the scene and for the you know for the focus i will select the flame okay and by default it's 2.8 i will increase decrease it about 1.5 so as to give more you know fudgy look you know blurry look maybe not 1.5 1.75 yeah. and save it out it's already taking a lot of time guys and let me just uh, hit a render and once it's rendered i will be back okay so now it's rendered and as you can see it's looking rather nice yeah so let me put this on i will now duplicate this candle and put some random candles all around and create a rendered animation okay and let's see how the how this flame is working with the animation i'll pause my video once again and once the rendering is done i will come back and show you the final output okay now that i have rendered the animation it took me quite a few times and uh, you can see a subtle you know movement in the flame so this is it guys i hope you like this video and uh, if you like my content please consider subscribe to my channel and also give me a thumbs up to the for this video if you would like the concept so until the next time i'm sumit signing off and i'll see you in the next video